It's time for the Championship Playoffs. There's one space left in the Premier League next season as Fulham, Aston Villa, Middlesbrough and Derby County compete to reach Wembley and achieve their ultimate goal of once again becoming a top flight team. We'll see Fulham face Derby and Villa take on the Borough, but what would a team look like if we made a combined 11 of the four teams competing in this year's playoffs? In goal is Sam Johnston. This was a hard choice as all four keepers have impressed over the season, but we've given the nod to Aston Villa's Sam Johnston, who's had a sublime season on loan from Manchester United, and there's a very good chance he'll be a Premier League goalkeeper next season, be it with Aston Villa or someone else. But definitely not Man United, to hear is pretty safe there. Only Wolves' John Ruddy has kept more clean sheets than Johnston, with the Wolves stopper recording 24 shutouts to Johnston's 20. Right back is Ryan Fredericks. I think it's fair to say this has been the best season of Ryan Fredericks' career and he's really found a home at Fulham since joining in 2015. With ridiculous amounts of pace, Fredericks epitomises the modern fullback flying up the flank and providing assists, but is also astute enough with his defensive responsibilities. One issue for Fulham is that Fredericks could leave the club in the summer, with his contract set to expire and a lot of Premier League interest coming his way. Centre back James Chester. A second Aston Villa player, Casuals might think it would be Champions League winner John Terry in this team, but James Chester has been the real star at the back for Steve Bruce's side, and many will argue he's been Villa's best player. Once dubbed too short to play centre back by Tony Pulis, Chester has had no such issues with his height this season, and the Wales centre half could get his own back on the baseball cap donning gaffer as Villa take on Burr in the playoff semi finals. Plays alongside Curtis Davies. Costing just £500,000, Curtis Davies has to be considered as one of the signings of the season, jumping off the merry-go-round at Hull City and into the open arms of Derby County and Gary Rowett. Davies knows all about winning the playoffs, doing so with Hull in 2015, and his experience could be vital in the quest for that final place in the Premier League. The 33-year-old is likely to have his hands full though, as he gets set to battle with an informed Alexander Mitrovic in the semi-finals. Left back is Ryan Sessegnon. Ok, so he's played a lot of his football this season on the left wing, but it's my team so little baby Sess is having to go backwards once again and slot in at left back in this team, just to accommodate even more attacking players. It's frightening to watch what Ryan Sesson is doing at the age of 17, and if anything, it's a little bit offensive. Because when I was 17, all I had were a few A levels to my name and a stinky underwhelming love life, whereas Ryan sesson has got 15 championship goals this season, he's worth apparently £50 million pounds, and he's won Championship Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year and Apprentice of the Year. But at least I don't need fake ID to get served a pint in the pub. Not that you'll need it for long anyway, he's 18 next week. You can just imagine it when Fulham win the playoffs. All the players are celebrating with champagne and there's Ryan Sessegnon whiting in the corner because he's had too much bubbly. Right midfield, Adama Traore. Christ, you'd think I was putting together a FIFA team with the amount of pace in this side, but Adama Traore deserves his place in this 11, having finally started to achieve the potential he first showcase when he arrived in England in 2015. Signing for Villa three years ago from Barcelona, we saw flashes of brilliance from Adama, but it was short-lived, as injury and ill discipline saw him have a limited role at Villa Park. It's only this season that Traore has flourished, providing 10 assists for Borough and making pretty much any fullback crap their pants when faced with his speed and dribbling ability. I'm getting a sweat on just thinking about it. In the middle we've got Tom Kearney. Unless your name is Ruben Neves, there's probably no better midfielder in the championship than Tom Kearney. The Fulham man was sensational last season as the Cottagers narrowly missed out on promotion, and this term he's been no different, with the Scotland International pulling the string from the middle of the park for Slavisa Jakanovic's side. With 5 goals and 5 assists to his name, Kearney was named in the Team of the Year for the second season in a row and the passing extraordinaire should be playing Premier League football next season. He's alongside Mohamed Besic. He may have only joined in January, but more Besic has been that impressive that we need to include him in this team and if we don't he'll probably chase after us and shout in my face like he did at that poor referee against Millwall. The Bosnian midfielder has improved Borough massively since arriving on loan from Everton, with his energy in the middle of the park and ability to retrieve possession making him a key player under Tony Pulis, and I'm sure he'll be very keen to try and sign Besic permanently in the summer. On the left flank is Albert Adoma. In the deal that saw Adama Traore swap Aston Villa for Middlesbrough, Albert Adoma went the other way, and it's fair to say that both teams have benefited from the deal. The Ghanaian swapped from his comfortable right wing to the more unknown left flank and hasn't looked back this season, chipping in with 14 championship goals and 5 assists from out wide, making him the top scorer in a Villa shirt. As well as his goals, Adoma has been the man for the big occasion for Steve Bruce, who will be hoping to rely on Adoma once again in the playoffs, where the stakes are even higher. Up front is Lewis Graben. 
Now Alexander Mitrovic may feel harsh done by considering the number of goals he scored on loan at Fulham, but he just misses out on this team with Lewis Graben nipping in ahead of him, having been a consistent source of goals all season. On loan from Bournemouth, Graben narrowly missed out on the Championship Golden Boot, scoring 20 goals during the season, 12 of which coming during his initial loan spell at Sunderland. He would moved to Villa in January but remained on the goal scoring trail, but instead this time his goals were actually winning points, rather than being mere consolations in defeat. Last season, Graven was a runner-up in the playoffs with Reading, and we'll be praying he can go one better this year. And finally, he's alongside Matej Vidra. The top scorer in the championship, Derby County's Matej Vidra found the batter the net 21 times over the course of the season, and his goals reminded everyone of what a good striker he is, first breaking out of the scene at Watford in 2012. Since then, it hasn't been plain sailing for Vidra, but the Czech striker has been back on form this season, with his lethal touch in front of goal guiding Derby to the playoffs, despite the Rams having their annual dip after the turn of the year. Can Matic Vidra's goals guide 6th place Derby County to Wembley and finally back into the Premier League? So that's our combined Championship Playoffs 11, let us know who you think will go up in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.